Hey adventurers, welcome to Israel. We are out in the Negev Desert. This rocky desert spans about half of the country, although we are in a very sandy portion. And the reason is we are going to be looking for some very unique species that have adapted to the sandy area tonight. So I'm just waiting for the sun to come down. I'm meeting up with some locals here and we are going to have two main targets. Uh, two viper species that are uniquely specialized in all this sand. One of those is going to be the desert horn viper and the other is the Sierra sand viper. But they are able to dig into the sand in order to uh, ambush their prey or be protected and cover from predators. So that is what we're going to look for. We're going to look for tracks in the sand as they move around, sometimes in a side winding pattern like we have with the snakes at home. So stay tuned. We just need it to get a little bit darker. All right, now that it's dark, it is time to find our first species. And up in this tree, I just spotted it. Right over here is a chameleon. This is a common chameleon. So these guys are pretty widespread. I think you can find them basically through the entire country. Um, but so even out here in the desert, they can be pretty common in these sort of little uh, tree areas. And there's probably some other ones up here as well. We just need to find them. Now, chameleons are pretty cool. They uh, hunt by shooting their tongues out and grabbing prey. So very cool to get our very first species of the night. All right, this is our very first snake of the night, a little diadem snake. Look at this. Now, this is actually the longest snake in Israel. Uh, they can get up to a meter and a half. Uh, so that's pretty big. I think like, uh, like four and a half feet long. But this is just a little juvenile. So not very long at all. Uh, under two feet, it looks like. So very cool. They have these nice sort of patches uh, on the back. And uh, they often have uh, these eyebrow spots on the face. So excellent to see. They are very common, one of the most common snakes out in this desert habitat. But they are also found in some of the habitat that's next to the desert as well. And they can be quite good climbers, although most of the time they're found on the ground in the sand. Oh, wow. <laughs> He's just climbing up that tree, or that little bush. You can see it does, he, he, he climbs up quite easily too. All right, look at this guy in the sand. This is a wedge-snouted skink. I want you to look at that nose. This is the perfect angle for it. That is just perfectly designed to uh, dig in the sand. Let's see if he'll do it really briefly for us. Um, I don't want him to disappear, but yeah, you can see much smooth scales uh, and his tail. It's a little hard to see because it's not in focus in the back here, but he's got a regrown tail as well. So these, these skinks, they move through the sand by swimming in a serpentine motion. There are some other skinks out here that will actually swim and use their arms, but this guy is uh, snake-like. So hopefully he'll, he'll show us, let's see if I, if I tap him, will he show us how he digs? There we go, just like that. And you have to get them quick, otherwise they will disappear in the sand. Okay, our next snake is right here. This is just a hatchling of a crowned leaf nose snake. So he's pretty small, but I want you to see his nose. He's got a strong, a, a, an extra large uh, scale, a rostral scale there that he uses to dig in the sand. Let's see, sometimes he does it right here. Let's see if he'll do it for us. Nope, just, just giving us a normal slither. But, um, whoa. So these snakes uh, will use, will have a very unique sort of pattern uh, as they go through the sand. They will uh, 
go under the sand a little bit and come up. And so sometimes that just that pattern is really easy to identify. Um, and they eat eggs, and so they'll actually dig burrows uh, to get after some of the eggs of the lizards that are here. I think it's the only snake that actually digs burrows, where the other ones just use the burrows. So very cool to see this guy. <laughs> and we'll let him go off into the night. Bye, guy. So now that the snake took off, we can really see the tracks here is how it moved. It looks like it went under the, I just disrupted it, but it looks like maybe it dug its nose right before there. So very cool to see. And this is, this is really how we're finding a lot of the stuff is we're following the tracks out here and seeing what's on the other side. All right, right here we have some viper food. This is the Anderson's short fingered gecko. And this is quite a big one too. You can see they have a very large head um, and a very thin tail. But these guys are very common out here in the sandy dunes. So very cool to see this guy. And uh, or I think it might actually be female because I don't see spurs uh, near the tail there. Hidden in the sand in front of me is finally one of our targets. You may be able to see the shape of a snake here that has just dug itself into the sand. Let me show you what is under here. Here we go. Look at that. This is the Sierra Sand Viper. This is the smallest viper in Israel. Oh, we don't want him to go away. Come back. I want to show you how they hunt. Now this snake is really unique because what it'll do is it'll flatten its body out like that and dig itself into the sand. And it does this so that it can lay in ambush for prey that's, that's coming by. And those geckos we saw earlier are excellent food for these guys to be eating. He's not all the way under yet and he seems pretty calm, but they will cover themselves up fully. Another cool thing is the snake moves in a side winding motion. There we go, that typical sort of pattern that we often see back at home with our sidewinders. You know, another snake that lives in the sandy areas. So very cool, but we're gonna let him take off through the night and go look for, for something else. And we can see the tracks uh, that he made here, kind of the swishing back and forth. So, bye snake. All right, we finally got our other viper target for tonight. This is the desert horned viper, and you can easily tell by those horns right above the eye. Now this snake is a bit bigger um, than the Sahara sand viper, um, but it has a lot of the same behaviors. It digs itself in the sand to ambush prey. It moves in a sidewinding pattern. It eats a lot of the same stuff. So very, very cool, very unique snake. I'm so glad we got both of our targets tonight. Now, one of the cool things that this snake and the other one does is it'll make a hissing sound, but it's actually from rubbing the scales and it's not doing it. It's pretty calm now, but uh, supposedly the theory is that that method uh, uses less moisture and less water uh, than hissing wood, and so that could be very helpful for a snake that lives in such a dry habitat. All right, we've got another snake here. Look at this. Let me zoom up on its head a little bit. There's a bit of. There we go. This is the Rogers Racer. Now, <laughs> the Hebrew name for these guys is kind of funny. This is the Saddled Angry Snake. Uh, they are known to bite, and normally they're diurnal. They do most of their hunting of lizards during the day. Um, but you can find them at night sometimes, like this guy's uh, nice and active. So pretty cool to get one more snake. They are also a fairly uh, long snake. They can get up to uh, one and a third meters. 
Um, what's he doing rolling like that? Oh, that's kind of cool. Um, and, um, but this one, this one might be just over two feet, I think. So pretty cool to see this guy. And we'll let him uh, go find some lizards to hunt. Maybe he'll get a gecko or something. All right, I've got one last species to show you. It's right here. This is a Nubian ibex. They're very common out here in the desert. Um, and so, you know, I wanted to make sure that he got his screen time. But thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. I'm Greg Schechter. This is Schechter Natural History, and I'll see you in the field.